Greetings my beautiful lovelies, it's Emmy and welcome back. Today's video is sponsored by Zojirushi, the makers of my favorite rice cooker. This month, September, is National Rice Month and Zojirushi has joined with US Rice Federation in celebrating the 30th anniversary of National Rice Month. Today I'm going to be using this beautiful machine that Zojirushi sent me to cook rice that has been grown domestically here in the US. Did you know that the US produces over 20 billion pounds of rice annually? 20 billion pounds. These are some of the varieties of rice. I had no idea there were so many different varieties that were grown domestically. Sushi rice, jasmine rice, Texas long grain rice. Look at this beautiful purple rice. Sprouted brown rice. Arborio rice. So all of these rice varieties were grown here in the US, mostly on family farms located in California, Louisiana, Mississippi, Texas, and Arkansas. So big thanks to Zojirushi and the US Rice Federation for supporting my channel and for sponsoring this video. Now today I'm going to be combining forces and using some domestically grown sushi rice and my new Zojirushi rice cooker to test out this gadget. Look at this. This is actually a toy that I've had for many years. I've been holding on to this for a long time because this looks a bit daunting. This is a toy for children to make makizushi. So before we can even test the gadget, we're going to have to cook up some rice. Growing up, we always cooked our rice using a rice cooker. Just until recently have I learned how to cook rice on a stovetop because I always used a rice cooker. That was one of my assignments, my chores, was to wash and get the rice ready for supper. And using a rice cooker, it couldn't be any easier and it always cooks it perfectly. This is the NP-NWC10 model and it has a lot more functions than my last cooker. We can cook different types of rice, including regular rice, sushi rice, jasmine rice. You can also cook oatmeal and there's a GABA brown function. So I just learned that GABA brown is not a new variety of rice. In fact, it is a technique of cooking brown rice to release more GABA. And GABA is short for gamma amino butyric acid, which is supposed to be better for you. There's also a kanji function, which cooks a rice soup, one of my favorite things to have for breakfast, also porridge. So this is a much fancier model than my last machine, and I have to say, after spending some time using it, I quite like it. Simple features like having a clock is so handy, because then I know exactly when my rice is ready. My last model did not have a little digital screen, so I didn't really know when the rice was going to be done until it was about 15 minutes before it was finished. It would do kind of a 15 minute countdown. But this one specifically tells you how many minutes are left. And I love that because I can tell my youngest child, who is very much interested in time, exactly how much time it's going to be before dinner is ready. Simple things, simple pleasures. So Zojirushi started way back in 1910 as a vacuum bottle company and changed their name to Zojirushi in 1961. And Zo, which is the Japanese word for elephant, stands for strength and intelligence. Look at that logo, so stinking cute. Zojirushi also manufactures other appliances, including electric griddles, coffee makers, bread makers, and I can attest to their quality. I have the electric griddle and I also have the bread maker and both of them are excellent. So let's go ahead and use this to make our rice. Couldn't be any easier. We pop that open and we take this bowl out. This is a five and a half cup capacity cooker, which means it will cook up about 10 cups of fully cooked rice. So today we're going to be making sushi rice. So we're gonna follow these increments. The cooker comes with a specific measuring cup and we're gonna be cooking three cups today. So I'm gonna measure out my California grown sushi rice. So we're gonna take this in the sink and we're gonna run some cold water over it, agitate it, and then drain it. And we're gonna do this three to four times until the water is pretty clear. Alrighty, so now that we've rinsed and washed our rice, we're going to dry the bottom, place it into our cooker. Since I added three cups of rice, I'm gonna add water to the three cup level here, specifically for sushi rice. And then we're gonna close it. I'm gonna push the menu button for sushi. And then I'm gonna hit start. and it sings me a song. So I know in 67 minutes, my rice will be complete. And while that is cooking, let's go ahead and open this up. So this is the Futomaki Maki Cook Joy Sushi Maker. It's made by Bandai. 
here is the toy itself. So here are some different molds. Here is the main unit. Here is a little rice paddle. This is a little pair of tongs to pick up the sushi. This is a component of this. This is very convenient. This is a little stand for our cards so we can look at our instructions while we're making our sushi. So there's a plastic band. And here, my lovelies, are the instructions. Is that not intimidating? Oh my goodness. Very illustrative. There are step-by-step -step illustrations, which help. And there's also YouTube, which I will also be referencing if I get stuck. Oh my gosh. So this machine is capable of making small, medium, and large sushis. And you'll need to make those different sizes in order to make these different designs like this teddy bear. So I've already washed all the components. Let's put this together. So we're going to take our plastic band and we're going to insert this roller inside. Then we're going to insert this roller, place that here. And then we're going to insert this last roller into here. Clip right here. All right, we have one minute left on my rice cooker. Just kidding, that was more like 10 seconds. There it is, all beautifully cooked. So go underneath the rice and give it a stir. Just turn it over lightly. And if you run your rice paddle under a little bit of water, before you scoop it, the rice will not stick to the rice paddle. And now we are ready to color this so we can make our sushi. And I'm gonna be using some of this. This is dekofuri, and this is specifically for coloring rice for bento boxes. So in this bowl, I'm gonna be making pink. So I'm gonna add one packet of this. Look at that. Immediately, it turns the rice a beautiful color. What's really great about dekofuri is that it's already seasoned, so we don't need to add any salt or anything additional to this. To keep the rice from drying out, cover it with a little bit of cling film. Next, let's do a little bit of yellow. Alrighty, so the rice is prepared. Now we have to prepare the seaweed. For the large rolls, we're just gonna take the nori sheet and fold it in half. For the medium rolls, we're gonna take the half sheets and then fold them into quarters. And for the small rolls, we're gonna cut this into eighths. So the first sushi I'm gonna attempt is this one, the heart-shaped makizushi. First, we're gonna begin with the heart, which is a medium-sized roll. And we're gonna fill this trough with rice. Now we're going to lift this up, slide this closed, and we roll forward, and it's gonna start forming the roll. Now we're gonna take our nori sheet, we're gonna place it into the belt and rotate it. And look how it feeds it in. That's so cool! And you keep rotating and rotating, and it's wrapping the rice in the seaweed. So stinking cool! This up, pull this back, and it should reveal our rolled sushi. Look at that! I think I overstuffed this just a little bit. We're gonna take the mold they provided to make the heart shape. So it has a V and then two bumps on top. So we place this into this like that and then place this on top and then use this cover to press everything together. Press and then we push this out and it should give us a heart shape. Ready? <laughs> now we're going to move this setting to the large setting here. This is our plain sushi rice. And then we're gonna place the roll that we just made right into that bed. And then make sure there's rice surrounding the entire roll. Doo -doo -doo. Close it and rotate. Okay, it's turning. A large sheet of nori and feed that in. I love how it just munches it up. So cool. <laughs> like adding machine tape or something. So cool. And then we unlock it, pull it out, and there it is. <laughs> Look at that, so cool. 
Oh, mine's a little bit off center. I think I put a little bit too much rice on the bottom and a little too little on top. But let's go ahead and cut it and see what it looks like inside. So get my knife moistened. <laughs> oh man! Okay, let's just cut it in the middle and see. <laughs> it does not look like a heart at all. But at least it's in the middle. That's great. It doesn't look like a heart. But let's go ahead and give it a taste. Here we go. Itadakimasu. <laughs> so it definitely needs some shoyu or some soy sauce and some wasabi, but not too bad. And I love the texture of sushi rice. The rice cooker cooked the sushi rice perfectly. It's tender while being sticky, but my sushi making skills on the other hand could definitely use some improvement. So let's make some more. <laughs> so let's tackle this one next. And this one makes a cute little pink flower. Adjust this for the small setting, moving the roller to the S. Again, fill the trough, roll it. That's a seaweed. Roll it in. <laughs> so stinking cool. Pull this back, and look! We have the perfect little roll, little cigar of rice. Oh, the little ones are so cute! So I'm gonna do this five more times so we have the petals for the flower. So we're gonna stack these up with the asparagus in the middle, and then we're gonna take this belt of seaweed and Hold it together. Make a little bed of rice. Place our bundle in there. We want to completely surround it. This is my favorite part. I just love how it eats it up. <laughs> there we have it. The perfect roll. I'm gonna cut these all together. So I made the flour. Let's go ahead and try making the kitty cat. So what we do is we take our two pink rolls and we place them in the trough here and then we smush it. And that will give us this kind of triangular shape. Okay, there we have it. That's going to be the top of the kitty's head. Two pieces of asparagus and these are going to be the eyes of the kitty. So one eye here, one here. I'm going to put some rice in between that space. Now we're going to place the nose of the kitty, and this is a piece of carrot that's been cut into a triangular shape, and we're going to have it pointing up. I'm going to put the one piece here, and one piece here. We're going to fill this all back with rice, and now we're just going to cover the whole thing with a layer of rice. And roll it. And hopefully it will be a kitty. <laughs> in goes the nori. Again, my favorite part. Let's pop it out. <laughs> looks so great. Oh my gosh, I think it might look like an actual kitty. Okay, this is exciting. Alrighty, lovelies, now for the moment of truth. We're gonna cut these makizushi in cross section and see how we did. We'll cut the ends off first. Hey, I think we did all right, yeah! <laughs> Look, there's the flower. Yes, 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 way better than my heart. Look at that, that looks awesome. Cut the end off. Eh, not so great there, but that's just the end. So let's go ahead. Oh, look, it's the kitty's face, nice. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah! <laughs> There's the kitty's face. A couple pieces for the ears. We need some very thin strips. Now it'll look more like a kitty. Otherwise it looks kind of like a bear. There it is, the kitty! So pleased with that. Here are my finished makizushi. Aren't they stinking cute? I'm so pleased with how they turned out, especially after my first run with the heart. These turned out great. Look at that cat dish, so cute. Let's eat the flower. Itadakimasu. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a very big bite. <laughs> that little bit of deco furi that we added 
gives it a little bit of kind of savoriness. It's not really tangy like sushi rice normally would be, but it does give it some flavor. But once you add the shoyu and the wasabi, it just rounds it out completely. The wasabi gives it a little bit of this kind of spicy kick, but not spicy chili, kind of more of a sinusy kind of spice. Delicious mustardy-like flavor. And then you've got that rich saltiness from the soy sauce, which goes so nicely with the nori or the seaweed on the outside of the makizushi. Although these look very complex, these are very simple in flavor. You can make a traditional makizushi with imitation crab, a little bit of fish roe, or a little bit of egg inside. You could add all kinds of flavorful additions inside for a more traditional and flavorful makizushi. All in all, I'm very pleased with how this machine worked. I think kids would love to do this. It does have a bit of a learning curve, but once you figure out how to roll the little individual rolls, it actually goes along pretty quickly. Alrighty, my beautiful lovelies, thanks so much for tuning in, and big thanks to Zojirushi and US Rice Federation for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to learn more about Zojirushi and their products, head over to www.zojirushi.com. And if you'd like to learn more about USA Rice, head to www.usarice.com. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye.